The Legend of Zelda, a series that is beloved by many. Every game in the series is just a blast to play. Well, almost all of them. But even the lesser titles are still worth your time in my opinion. Of course, since the Zelda series has been around for so long, some games might have gotten forgotten about. Which brings us to the game that I want to talk to you guys about today, The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap, the most forgotten and underrated Zelda game of all time. Let's not waste any more time. In North America, The Minish Cap was released in January of 2005, just missing the holidays. This was also extremely late into the Game Boy Advance's lifespan, so it's easy to see why this game did not sell very well. As a result, this game is often forgotten. That's why I'm here, to tell you all why you need to give this game a chance and why it should be played by all. Let's start with the game story. Don't worry, I won't go into too much detail, so that you can experience the bulk of this game's plot for yourself. You start the game like almost any Zelda game, in bed asleep. You awaken to find that your grandfather wants you to deliver a sword to Hyrule Castle, which will be presented to the winner of the sword fighting competition at the Pickery Festival. No, not that kind of sword fighting. At the same time, Princess Zelda has come over to your house to bring you to the Pickery Festival. So away you go with Zelda, er, I mean, after Zelda. Now what do I mean by Pickery? Well, Pickery are also known as the Minish, and are tiny anthropomorphic creatures that resemble mice. It is said that once every 100 years, the portal to the Minish Realm opens, so this festival celebrates that occasion. But where is this portal? Well, I'll let you guys discover that when you actually play the game. Anyway, the winner of the sword fighting competition is this dark and mysterious being known as Vati, who tries to steal the light force that he believes to be hidden in the box which holds the legendary Pickery Blade, a blade used to defeat, you know, evil and stuff. Vati opens the box and ends up releasing monsters into the world and destroys the Pickery Blade in the process. Once he realizes that the light force is not in there, he pretty much freaks out and turns Zelda to stone, and Link gets knocked out in the process. You awaken to find the king about to dispatch his guards to find the Pickery, as he believes that they can restore the Pickery Blade. But as legends say, the Pickery will only reveal themselves to children. So, with the sword made by Link's grandfather in hand, Link sets out to find the Minish, er, the Pickery. Along the way, Link meets a creature named Ezlo, who resembles a hat. He ends up being Link's companion in this game, similar to how Navi was Link's companion in Ocarina of Time. I won't say too much more about him, but he is easily my favorite Zelda companion character, only next to Midna from Twilight Princess. His sass and wit are extremely entertaining, and come on, he's a freaking hat! After discovering the Pickery Village, Link learns that he has to collect the four elements, being earth, fire, wind, and water, to restore the Pickery Blade back to its full power, and thus the adventure begins. The game's story won't blow any minds, but it's compelling enough, and it doesn't get in the way of the gameplay. Speaking of gameplay, this game plays very similarly to other 2D Zelda games, such as A Link to the Past and Link's Awakening. You can move freely in 8 directions, your sword is very snappy and responsive, it has a good wide range, and it's awesome for killing monsters. As for the items, you can have two assigned at once, both to the A and B buttons. All of the items are easy to use and most of them are pretty fun. Some classic items return, such as the bombs and the arrows, and these items work very similarly to how they did in past 2D Zelda games, and are as fun as ever to use. There's also a handful of new items in this game, which are, well, hit or miss in my opinion. For example, the Gust Jar is a ton of fun to use. You can use it to suck up things from the environment for puzzle solving, you can suck up items like rupees or hearts, or even suck up enemies and shoot them back out. There's some really creative uses for it, but I won't spoil them here. On the other hand, there's the Cane of Paxi, or Patchy, or Paxi, I don't really know, which flips things over? While it can be used on a fair amount of enemies and objects, it doesn't reach the level of creativity that the Gust Jar does. There's some other new items, and even some item upgrades that are super fun to discover and use. Along with an awesome inventory, Link has a ton of different actions at his disposal, he has the typical rolling, which is simply executed using the R button while moving. He has grabbing, pushing, and all that Zelda stuff. But he can also learn lots of advanced sword techniques that are actually quite useful and a lot of fun to execute, such as the rolling attack. In my opinion, Link controls better in this game than he does in any other 2D Zelda game. He is super easy to control, and the developers were really creative with how Link could move in a 2D game. To sum it all up, Link controls like a dream. 
Along with the help of Ezlo, Link has the power to turn into the size of a Minish, which is no bigger than a thimble. This is the game's main mechanic that separates it from other Zelda games. It allows Link to explore places he never would have been able to explore before. It's not crazy innovative by any means, but it's certainly cool, and adds a cool twist on exploration and progression in this game. Oh yeah, there's another new mechanic worth mentioning. Link can clone himself. I won't give the context behind it, but there's some decent puzzle to take advantage of this ability, both in and out of dungeons. Minish Cap's world is a ton of fun to explore. While the map may look small, it's jam-packed with things to do and places to explore. There's no bullshit empty field like in Ocarina of Time. That's right, I just dissed Ocarina of Time. What are you gonna do about it, internet? It's true that the game's story is quite short, but the side quests more than make up for the shorter, simpler story in Minish Cap. There's actually tons of secrets and extras to find throughout the game. A lot of the side quests revolve around a new item that you can use called Kinstones. You can find these Kinstone pieces in grass, jars, treasure chests, and all sorts of other places. When you find a Kinstone piece, someone else in Hyrule will have the other half to your piece. When you fuse Kinstone pieces with someone, something will change in the world. Maybe a treasure chest will appear, or a secret cave will open. Kinstone fusing is a lot of fun, and if you're a completionist like me, finding all the Kinstone fusions will be a blast. As for the dungeons, I won't say too much on them so that you can experience them for yourselves, but let me say, the 4th and 5th dungeons in the Minish Cap I think are some of the best in the Zelda series, period. They change up the typical dungeon formula, albeit very slightly. Not to say that the other dungeons in this game aren't great, because the others are still fun enough, but they're mostly made up of very cliché Zelda puzzles. They just don't stand out to me. But hey, Zelda puzzles are usually fun, so I can't complain too much. Now let's talk about the art style. Oh my goodness. Let's put it this way, it feels like Wind Waker's art style, but in 2D. Need I say more? This is the best looking 2D Zelda game ever. The designers got super detailed with the pixel art, and I'm a sucker for good pixel art. However, the art style really pops when you're the size of a Minish. Seeing these normal objects be gigantic next to Link looks awesome. Look at the detail of this little guy's house, which is inside a freaking book! Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Or how these clovers look like the size of normal trees to a human being. There are tons of other Minish habitats amongst normal environments that look freaking amazing. The art designers were firing on all cylinders when making this game. I just can't get enough of this art style. And finally, we'll talk about the music in this game. The music actually sounds pretty good for a Game Boy Advance title, which is infamous for having a really bad sound chip. But is the music actually good? For the most part, yeah. There's some really catchy and fitting tunes to go along with the environments in this game. Personal favorites of mine include the Minish Woods, the Cloud Tops, and the Temple of Droplets. There's a few forgettable tracks, but what can you do? As you guys can tell, I really can't find much to say that's bad about the Minish Cap. I'll admit it's not a very innovative or earth-shattering game, both from a gameplay and story perspective, but the Minish Cap is certainly far from being a bad game. Between the unfortunate release date and the way this game plays it safe in the grand scheme of things, it's easy to see why this game has been overlooked by a lot of people. However, I'm saying that you should really give this game a chance. It's on the Wii U eShop for less than $10. While the main story is only about 10 hours long, the side quests can add another 8 to 12 hours on top of that. I've played through this game a ton of times, both as a kid and as an adult, and it's a blast every time. If you're looking for a Zelda game to hold you off until Breath of the Wild, this is the game to play. It's a really special experience, and I'm sure you'll love it. Thanks for watching, guys. I really hope I convinced you guys to give the Minish Cap a try. It's a game I'm really passionate about, and I, I just love it so much. So if you enjoyed this video, of course, please leave a like. Don't forget to comment on what your thoughts are of the game. If you haven't played it before, why you haven't played it, what your thoughts are, if you actually have played it, if you enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy it. And make sure you subscribe to my channel if you've not already for more Nintendo goodness, including lots of Zelda stuff. All right, peace out, guys. Bye.